Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to remove and replace the fuel pump on this Opel Corsa C from 2003. I will show you a couple of tests you can do. But first, let's see the symptoms of a bad fuel pump or a weak fuel pump. Well, let's say when you accelerate on a highway and you want to overcome someone and you can feel that the car doesn't have the power that it should be. All right, so the first test you can do without any tools, put the key in the ignition and turn it in the second position. When you turn it, you should see a sound from the back like a whining sound which should come from the fuel pump that's the only thing that will make that sound so let's take a listen second and you could hear that that's the fuel pump being activated and delivering fuel pressure on the fuel rail if let's say for some reason the fuel pump is not activated when you turn the key in the ignition then go ahead and open the fuse box and you're going to find this pink relay. Look for pin 87 and 30 and you can see the 87 and 30 is the switch for the fuel pump. And as you can see we've got pin number 30 and 87. I will connect these and the fuel pump is on. That should activate the fuel pump, doesn't matter if the key is in the, ign in the ignition or not. Next, if the fuel pump still is not on, you can inspect the fuse number 9, which is for the fuel pump. You can also have a look on the back of this cover. You've got fuse number 9 down here. You've got this little plier provided here. You can remove the fuses with that. Inspect the fuse. It shouldn't be blown. If the fuse is good, the relay is working and you still cannot hear the pump, then still keep jump these two terminals number 87 and 30 and if you have a look under the back seat on the passenger side down there is the fuel pump and unplug the connector just press on this tab and release the connector and you'll find two more thick wires the red and the brown turn your voltmeter to 20 volts direct current probe these two wires and you should see 12 volts of course with the relay jumped if you find 12 volts then go ahead and connect basically back probe first the positive wire so i'm gonna place it like that and i'm gonna test if it has a good connection and it does so i'm gonna place it under this metal frame and i'm going to reconnect the fuel pump basically I will basically connect a jumper cable on the positive terminal of the car battery. At the end of that jumper cable I connect my voltmeter and it reads 0.5 volts dropped, which is kind of a lot, but anyway, it's not enough that the fuel pump is not working. And now you can basically repeat the process and do it on the negative side. You just, you basically reconnect the terminals on the negative here and on the car battery as well on the negative and see the voltage drop luckily on this fuel rail you've got a shredder valve so you just open this cap on the top here on the top of the fuel rail i'm gonna find something that will thread in on this type of shredder valve this one will do the work it has the threads and it seems that it fits in here just hand tight it do not over tight it because those threads are made by plastic so now connect your fuel pressure gauge so now basically at this point you're not checking if the fuel pump works you are checking how much fuel pressure it delivers and if the fuel lines are okay because the fuel pump can be good but if there is an obstruction like let's say on the fuel filter then you will not get the right pressure in here or you might get the right pressure but very very slow and that's not what you want when you accelerate fast because you need to replace the pressure which is released through the fuel injectors again jump the terminals here and it goes up quite fast as you can see usually when you start the car the pressure would increase to around let's say 65 psi i'm going to turn off the pump it seems that the pressure is steady it's not decreasing very fast which is good the fuel filter on this car is right under the fuel pump down here connect your fuel pressure gouge before and after compare the values and see if the fuel filter is bad so from this point i'm going to show you next replace the fuel pump 
I'm gonna try these cheap tools and I'm gonna do a short review about them right now on the spot. Well, it seems like they don't work. <laughs> they don't actually work, right? There is no way you can place that thing in here. Guys, if you see this product on the market, don't buy it because I've tried it a couple of times, it doesn't work. So I'm gonna use my method, it's much better. This one will keep it open like that. And with another one. So here it comes. Easy and simple without these stupid gimmicks. Let's see, here it comes. Once you get the movement, it's quite easy. All right. Now you want to give a very, very good cleaning here. So any dust will not go inside. There is a ring which holds the fuel pump assembly on. So I'm going to lubricate these points which are supposed to come out. The plan B consists of bending a little bit these keepers in order to release this cap. I gotta change the head of the screwdriver, which will secure in this hole. Here it comes. Now also the fuel pump is free. And down there you can see the typical fuel pump. And interestingly, you've got the fuel pressure regulator down here. So you've got three tabs on the sides and you gotta press this in the same time and lift the pump. You can as well unplug these connectors. In order to unplug these connectors, and you, if you use one of these things, like a needle thing, you're gonna be able to unplug it like that. Once the connectors are out, it gives you more room to work on the fuel pump itself. So in order to release the fuel pump, You've got another three clips, two here and one here. So you gotta press them like that. And at the same time, lift the fuel pump. Okay, lift it up a little bit. On the next one, press it and lift it up a little bit more. Now this little cover of the fuel pump is out as well. And the only thing left is the fuel filter. Okay guys, so you kind of have to rip off this pre-filter because there is no way to you can remove it. They made it this intentionally, so you will not buy only the pump, you gotta buy the whole assembly, which is for making profits, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so from this point, you can open this hose clamp. This is just one time use, so make sure that you have a new one. And then you can replace the fuel pump itself. I actually have a new fuel pump. It comes with a pre-filter. It's not the same size, it's a little bit bigger because it delivers a lot of pressure. This is for racing, so that's why the size is larger, but you can definitely find a smaller pump which will match with yours. So let me give you the dimensions of this old fuel pump. 68 millimeters, 2.7 inch. The diameter is 1.49 inch or 37 millimeters or 38 millimeters. I reconnect the fuel lines, I plug back the connector and finally the ring and everything is on, the fuel pump is done. Alright guys, that was it. That's how you can replace a fuel pump on this Opel Corsa. Thanks for watching. I hope this video is useful. If so, give it a thumbs up. If you are new to this channel and you want to see more car repair videos, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, drive safe so I can see you soon.